Can you just quickly talk about pill in a pocket? Uh, it's very important for people to understand that if somebody like me is using it after decades of understanding how to treat people with AFib, it's like the old adage, if you give a child a hammer, every object's a nail, you know? So be careful, mm -hmm. you know, children shouldn't play with this technique. You really have to know what you're doing. Now, so with pill in the pocket is the following. For patients who have very infrequent episodes of AFib, not people are having them every couple of weeks, where they would prefer not to be under the risk of bleeding, with an anticoagulant, you could give them the drug only when they're at jeopardy. That's the theory. Now, there's a couple of things about that theory that are not proved. One of them, and it's an important thing, we really don't know that you're only at risk when you're in AFib. You're certainly at risk in AFib, but there's a whole concept of atrial myopathy with increased thrombogenesis, even when you're not in AFib. So, Remember, that's why it's important not to overuse this and to make sure you tell patients this is by no means proven and, and let them know what the risks and benefits are. Here's how it works. Somebody has, let's say, two, three episodes a year. There are Chad's Bass score that you'd like to cover. By the way, I've not done this in people who are like Chad's Bass of four and five and six. I just don't feel comfortable. I have done it in two, threes and fours at times, okay? But I try to keep it more of the twos and threes group. And then, very important, they have to self-monitor. I won't do it unless they buy some kind of wearable that they can pick up a fit. And those aren't perfect, as we all know. It can miss things, but not usually. It usually overcalls and undercalls a fit. So now they have some kind of either a watch or a Fitbit or something like that. And then they have to keep the pills with them, pill in pocket, right? You got to keep them available. So now you're off on a trip. And you go into AFib, you're very excited one night, you know, it's like you're on your first trip, you had three glasses of wine that you were told not to do, and you're in AFib, okay? Pull out your anticoagulant. I typically use a Pixaban, and you don't have to, you could use, you know, Rivaroxaban, but my experience has been with a Pixaban, and start the drug. These are patients who always have self-terminating AFib, so usually the episode's six, eight, whatever, 10 hours, and it stops. How long do you keep them on it afterwards? Nobody knows. But if you start it right away and the episodes are less than 24 hours, my rule is five to seven days. So those are my rules. And I've done it for many people over the last four or five years. So that's pill in the pocket anticoagulation. There's also pill in the pocket to terminate AFib. Like I mentioned, a friend who just took it last night, took 200 milligrams of flecainide, kept sending me tracings <laughs> like till two in the morning, it terminated yeah. in two to three hours. Without having that flecainide, previous episodes would last 16, 18 hours. So that's pill in the pocket flecainide, okay? Or propafenone, but I tend to use flecainide. But that has to be tested under safety first time in an ER, because sometimes you can go one-to-one -one and get into trouble about one, 2% of the times. So both of those are useful for people with sporadic, longer lasting, very symptomatic episodes. I use them occasionally and they're very good. Those are things that honestly you guys shouldn't do. Yeah. You should be aware of it. And let me tell you one last thing. We tell patients, you know, there's maybe 0.8% chance of a major bleed, a GI bleed, a bleeding in the brain, maybe one in a thousand. But when they come into your office, they show you your arm, like, look at this doc, you know, all these like little and unsightly things on their legs, especially women. That's stuff we don't talk to them about. We just totally gloss over the fact that it's not going to be so user friendly. And they did a survey. It was like almost 50% of patients were upset with non-significant in quotes bleeds. So it's not a benign therapy for the patient standpoint, even though they're not having major bleeds. And actually, there are more and more patients who wind up getting occlusive devices so they can get off their anticoagulants because they really are miserable with all the, every day. Doc, every time I hit my arm against a, something, I, I get this big black mark. Guess what? That's, that's not fun, right? So again, anticoagulants are totally part of the regimen. But if somebody is not doing well, you know what? They stop. 